I've had some people say they're a little bit intimidated by this, so I'm going to back up a bit here. What I want you to do, okay, I'm going to close this. In fact, you won't even see that. That was a custom palette. So you, I want to get this as much like you can. You will see it as I can. You're going to have these things on the side over here. I'm not sure if you've got them docked or not. You can dock all these different things here. If you want to put it beside one, it's a little tip. You have to hold it right beside it and let it go. And see there I missed. I can't really do it. Got it. All right. So you will have, no matter what version of painter you've got, you're going to have a category called oils. And within that category, you're going to see fine camel. At least, I believe I'm correct in saying that. If you've got a really, really old version of painter, you probably can't run it anyway. So, All right. So if you just take the fine camel, take the default settings. Okay, I want to do everything default for you today. Let's do File, New, and I want you to set this to 3000, this to 3000. I don't care what this is. This doesn't matter as long as you set these two. And the black, I don't care what color you use on the paper. And the type of paper, I'm using Painter 2015. Big bumps. So this is a pretty large image here. Um, and actually I'm going to go ahead and modify or name it. Let's call it. All right. All these tools over here. You can pretty much ignore all of these. However, I want to point out a couple of things. If you've used Photoshop at all, as far as key presses, right? That's not what I'm going to do today. <laughs> and the hot keys, what my point is, the hot keys in Photoshop and Painter are very similar. Minute, if you know the ones in Photoshop, just try it in Painter. It's probably going to work. For most of your tools, it's going to work. But you can use things like B for brush, R for rectangle selection, P is PN. Control K enables the kaleidoscope tool. You can also come down here under mirror painting. If you see mirror painting here, click and hold it, and it'll fly out this menu. Drag your mouse over while you're still holding and release it on this and you'll get it pops up the kaleidoscope tool up here now notice if you this is the same thing here as the menu so if you click here you're back to mirror painting instead of kaleidoscope painting we're doing kaleidoscope painting today this is the number of planes i like to think of these as planes Or let's do it like this. It, there's so all this is like a plane, right? And then these are the intersections of the planes, right? So They call it number of segments. Okay, they do call it segments. So I want you to raise this up to seven or eight. Oh, okay, I'm not finished explaining the tool. I'm sorry. This simply toggles the lines off and on. You know, it's now if I draw, kaleidoscope mode is still enabled. And I really like to work like this sometimes. It's kind of like you're working blind, but it's kind of like it gives you, uh, forces you to be a little bit freer. I think. But for now, let's go back. Let's turn those back on. Uh, this simply changes the color of your lines. Um, put it kind of like it was. This is the rotation angle of the lines. If you want to set that, I really recommend you just click on it here and drag it. It's, it's a lot. Unless you need a specific rotation, of course. Like a zero. And then you can type it in that little box there. 
instead of using their slider. So that's pretty good. Oh, that resets it all to what it was. So don't click that one, please, while you're in the middle of the thing. Because if you do, you're going to have to reconfigure the whole tool again. So, except I'm going to do it just for one reason. I want you to be able to see again how I go from the start. And that's good enough, really, for what we're doing here. Now, so I hit B for brush. So go back to my brush. Uh, here, you can just come over here and click on any color that you want. Okay, the way this works, you choose your color first. And then you in here, you click in the triangle and drag. And it chooses the hue, saturation, and value. So you see all the way up to saturation here. You he is here. He is of course the color of the. So you, that won't change. But then the value does change. You have those all the way up, and your value here is all the way up. But your saturation is down to zero. So okay. In other words, just click your color, and then click the shade of that color in here, within the triangle to pick your color this is not going to be a painter tutorial I want to just cover everything I think you're going to need to know this thing up here is called the navigator if I click and drag on the end it moves just moves the picture around you can also zoom in and out if you have a tablet PC I would recommend that you zoom in once because then after you do you're going to be able to use the touch interface to zoom in and out. I'm going to reset the rotation of the page. If you press Control Z row, it will zoom to fit the page to the window, which is a very good way to work. Try, if you don't know what to do, I want you to do, start at the center line here, and first of all, I want you to put a dot. Now, I want you to come down from that dot just a little bit. I want you to draw a horizontal line straight across as you can and see what happens of course it meets up now i want you to somewhere above where it meant i want you to put another dot right now i want you to connect that dot and that dot whoops i overshot it i'm i'm going more on my feel or what it's doing than i am on the cintiq which i need to just use the cintiq using a Cintiq Companion 2 today. Switch colors, switch it around. Oh, you know what? I want layers. I want layers. I'm going to do, I'm going to redo all that. I'm going to put it on a layer. So just real quick, I did what I do, like a dot, and then a dot, and then, let's see, horizontal line. And connect those. Now notice I did it with different, like, uh, different, uh, I find it easier to start at the top and come down to here. And go, that, that, that's just personal preference. Now watch what happens if I put another layer beneath this layer. And if I take orange, let's say orange, or, orange is complement of green, well, sort of, okay, I know. And all I did there is I just did it, drew underneath the green. Well, I wiped out the green though, didn't I? It needs stronger green. Go back to the green layer. Speaking of which, a lot of people like to name their layers. So, I think that's a good, that's uh, too much green. In it. No, it wasn't. It wasn't enough orange. So I'm just playing here and just doing whatever I comes to mind. And that's what I want you to do. Oops, and I'm drawing on the green layer with the orange. Ah. Okay, I'm OCD about my layers. When I use them, that is.
Let's go a different color. Go down here in the middle. And do sort of the same thing. Except I'm going to draw out just a bunch of lines. I don't know why. No reason. No particular reason. I want you to just draw, draw within one, pick one segment and draw within that segment is the easy way to do this. And if you want, you can like put dots here and then connect those dots. And you can put dots just wherever and connect the dots. And let's say we start there. Um, And it's going to look, you see, no matter what you do, kind of, it comes out looking pretty cool. At least I think it does. And then uh, complementary color again. I can encourage you to go with, oops, and I will encourage you to <laughs> also go with different layers if you want something underneath something else. And here again, just drawing within, draw simple stuff, simple shapes, keep it simple, simple colors, pretty colors, whatever color you like. Now is that my yellow? Yes it is, I thought it was. There we go. See, my trick here is I'm putting a complementary color underneath. Or, or I'm stacking, a better way it says, I'm stacking complementary colors. And a complementary color technically is one that is a, directly across the color wheel. So technically a complementary of this would be more of a green. So, okay, let's do that. Since I'm, let's put some purple up here. Let's just put some dots here where we've got, oops, to keep that purple. See how sloppy? <laughs> but it works, doesn't it? Yeah, if you want to, if you want to play with this brush, if anything, take your opacity way up. Uh, take the feature way down. You need to leave the feature at least at one. And actually, that's all I did on that when I customized this brush. And whatever I did, I just really slowed it down. Don't know how that happened. Okay, I'm gonna pull up my custom palette. And I'm gonna grab my fine, just to grab my fine camel out of my brush set. Okay, I wanted to see what I had it set at. I've got the feature at 1.3, bleed at zero. Both those are at 100%. Those make it a little more opaque, so you may not like that. But it's a very fast and it's a responsive brush. Uh, the kaleidoscope makes this a little bit slower. But, and here again, 
let's put a layer. Let's just play around with some complementary colors. And some parallel lines. I mean, that's all I'm doing is just cross hatching. Put some red for the people that like red. Like I don't. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. You get sloppy. Let's don't get too sloppy. What do I got here? Um, See what I'm doing? I'm drawing across that line and it's getting double. I mean, I'm drawing across the edge of that plane, that reflective plane, they call it. See, watch. As soon as you cross it, you get double, right? So if those lines are almost parallel, then it's okay. If they're just a little bit more off and you're done hatching, it can really mess up your density of your hatching. Okay, and I got too much stuff in the background there. Let's take that brush and make it really big. Let's try it like that instead. There. It wasn't too much stuff. It was just that I didn't like the combination of uh, <laughs> black and colors that I had. Now my blue is kind of going away, isn't it? Oh, wait a minute. Let's see. I should do that on the blue layer. Is there a blue layer? Well, sort of. Whoa, that was kind of fun. Save it. And I don't know, there's, it seems like there's just a little imbalance of colors on the outside here. Well, I kind of like it fading out to red too though. So the black is a little bit overwhelming to me still. Let's pick a color. Whoops. Let's go to a lower layer. And you could do all this on one layer. It doesn't matter one bit. It's just like, if you don't use layers in your normal drawings, I'd say don't use them in this. 
if you if you especially if you're a traditional artist start up just doing this all on the canvas now, if you're never done digital before but then you can practice on your drawing like I'm doing <laughs> Here we go. Let's save this and I'm going to make a tutorial out of it. Do a save as JPEG. I will make this image available for download in its full resolution. That's the one thing. If you save in JPEG, it does squash your layers. So be sure you save it in a RIF first. Or even a PNG, it will maintain the layers in Painter. I'm going to close that. Thank you very much for watching today.